Folks, I'm not going to do much of an intro because frankly, this guy doesn't need it. Another in our series of total, you know what, not another in our series of total success interviews. This is the total success interview, my childhood hero, Arnold Schwarzenegger, mate. Thank you so much for catching up. Well, Glenn, you know how to spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> but but I just want to say, you know, I was choking out there earlier, but I mean, you look good, you're losing weight, I'm glad that you're working out. I can tell you're working out because the way you did the exercise <laughs> was the correct way. Understood. You know, so well, so under your it's, direction. It's, it's good. No, no, but, uh, but that's very good. I'm proud of you. Thank you, mate. Yeah. I'm still a work in progress. Well, yeah, but... we all are. <laughs> yeah. Remember, as soon as you think that you're perfect, that's when you're screwed. Yep. Because then you don't make any more effort. Yeah. So that's why I always say, you know, stay hungry. Man. You always have to be hungry. You always got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, this still doesn't do it for me. I got to get better. I got to lose more weight. I got to trim down my tummy. I got to get bigger calves. I got to get bigger deltas. I got to train more. I got to diet more. You know, it's just, that's what makes, you know, makes you be hungry for being better and improving and more and all of those things. And remember also, too much is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about hunger because Stay Hungry was really one of your first movie roles. The last words in your autobiography, the last two words are Stay Hungry. You seem to be as hungry as ever. I see you flying around the world, hustling like a 20 year old. Are you still, is that an accurate observation? Are you still as hungry as you were? Well, you know, we, we always set goals. And um, so as soon as you set the goal and you have a clear vision of where you want to go, then you go after it. And that is what creates the enthusiasm. And that's what creates then, you know, the passion and all of this stuff. So, you know, in, in, when, when they started out, when I was 15, it was bodybuilding. So I chased that. Then eventually it was to be a leading man in movies. Then I chased that. Then I wanted to get into politics, I chased that. And all along the way, of course, uh, during my bodybuilding and uh, movie career, I was into you know making one dollar into two, not just yeah. to make a lot of money in movies and to become the highest paid entertainer, but you know to to uh, to then take that money and double that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it was always something that really excited me and I was enthusiastic about. And now you know it, if it is environmental uh, causes and issues that I'm very enthusiastic about, and I see it improving, and I see we are heading in the right direction. This is what we need to do to get there to a cleaner and greener world and so on. Or if it is, uh, you know, political reform in America, where we talk about redistricting and, uh, you know, how to take certain powers away from the politicians and give it to the ordinary folks. Uh, how do we make politicians, you know, serve the people rather than the party and get stuck in ideological corners, um, you know, promoting fitness and health doing the Arnold Classic Sports and Fitness Festival, which we're going to do in Australia again uh, in, in a week. And so, so I mean, there's, uh, it, there's so many things that, uh, that need to be done. Yep. And this is what creates then the enthusiasm in me and the, in the excitement. Wow. It's, well, it's been inspirational to, uh, to me to watch right. uh, this journey. <laughs> and uh, of course, dreams do come true because I'm sitting here. And mm. I, like you, you just look at Reg Park, Steve Reeves, You've got a generation of 40-somethings, 30-somethings, 50-somethings looking at you in that same way. Right, right. So I wanted to ask, because I know many of my answers to my questions will be delivered uh, when you come down and train us down in Australia in Sydney, but I wanted to sort of ask you about a little bit further about something that won't be as uh, kind of commonly talked about, which is the principle where you talked about, about a dollar into two. Can you tell us a little bit about how you did that in real estate, how you did that in mail order? I mean, not a lot mm -hmm. of people know that you are a fantastic direct response marketer with your mail order business. Can you talk well, just about the dollar into two concept? Well, it, it, you know, we all pay taxes and we all hate the idea that we're losing that money. Mm. But there's a difference between uh, hating that you lose that money and hating to pay taxes. I love paying taxes. Mm -hmm. If it is the fair amount and if it is used wisely, I think we all have to contribute that because that's how you set up social programs, that's how you build infrastructure, that's how you have a military and all of those kind of things. So that, that's great. But I always had the belief that the money that I pay in taxes, I want to make up through wise investments. Mm -hmm. So this is why I got into real estate right away in the 70s <clears throat> and I started buying raw land um, and developing that, uh, started buying apartment buildings, and, uh, and you know, just think about it. I mean, it would be in, in, I remember in 1974, I bought my first apartment building, and uh, we bought it for $215,000. That's it was then a lot of money. Yeah. 
And uh, I put only down like maybe $35,000, dollars But within two years, that apartment building was worth, instead of the two hundred fifteen three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and I sold it. So uh -huh. imagine now how much gain there was. Yeah. Right? I mean, so it, 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 we made hundreds of percent of, of my initial investment. Mm. So that's what I'm talking about. So it, it's, it takes, uh, you know, thoughts and uh, ideas can make much more money than actual physical labor. Mm -hmm. And physical labor is always part of the action because I always say you got to work your ass off no matter what you do because now you have a great idea, but then you still have to implement it and you have to hustle, you have to go to the bank, get your financial statement, do this and that, and they raise money sometimes and you go and look at a thousand apartment buildings to find the right one and all those kind of things. So you still have to work. But normally, if it's just physical labor, you can never make the money than you can make when you have ideas. So this is why it's important. I always tell people, I say, the secret is, is there's certain times, don't think. Like when you get up in the morning, don't think. Just roll out of bed, go in your life cycle, or go on a bicycle ride, or go to the gym, work out. You know that's what you have to do. And then read something and learn something. So mm. don't even think about it. Yeah. But there's other times where you have to really think and you really have to get creative and have a clear vision of where you want to go and what you want to do. And that's what I always had and that's what I always believed in. I always believed in making money so that then you can do something with that. You invest in it in order, eventually you create a family, you give some of your kids in order stuff, but also for charity. Yeah. Look, I have the, the, the Schwarzenegger Institute at USC. Yeah. And so we have to raise money all the time and make money to, 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 to pay for that and, those, and, and to support that. Yeah. We have the R20, the environmental organization. Well, any organization and any idea is great, but if you don't have the money, you can implement anything. Yeah. And so this is why it is important that if it's an environmental organization or if it is my after school programs, to the nationwide where we raise millions and millions of dollars every year or if it is just you know living in a great a great mansion or driving a nice Bentley and a Bugatti you know this kind of things it takes money to do all this kind of stuff so yeah. therefore I believe in making one dollar into two and having a good time when I pay my taxes so when <laughs> someone says you says Arnold I say we have bad news you, you, you owe 15 million dollars in taxes I say wow <laughs> yes <laughs> And then they look at me and says, why are you happy about <laughs> He's that? He's finally said, lost because, it. <laughs> because that means we must have made a lot of money. Yeah. You have to pay that much money in taxes. And they say, yeah, that's the way you look at it. And so that's the way I look at it. Wow, very yeah. positive. Yeah. So does that kind of relate to, because uh, I remember reading about even putting a financial perspective, one dollar into two, with your after school programs, because you were saying there's some statistics that says a dollar invested now in after school programs still creates us at least two further down the line. Right, exactly. So, so one uh, one dollar investment in after school programs can save you three dollars down the line. Wow. And the, the reason is very simple because when you have after school programs, the kids uh, get training from three to six o'clock in the afternoon. 70% of the kids come from homes where the parents are both working. So therefore there's no one home. Mm. So what happens when there's no one home? The kids first of all don't have anyone to do the homework with. They don't have anyone to ask a question about education, anything that they learned in school. They go and drift around out there in the city and they cre create trouble, mm -hmm. uh, teenage pregnancy, juvenile crime, drugs, gangs, violence, all of this stuff that's happening between three and six o'clock in the afternoon, mm. which the police and law enforcement in general cause the danger zone for kids. Uh -huh. Because that's when all this stuff is happening and it's because there's no supervision. So if we provide supervision and have the kids stay in school with different you know, educators and uh, different mentors and different people, and they get their homework assistance and the tutoring and the sports programs and the fitness programs and the arts programs and music and all of those kind of things. They stay there and they get educated. They get better with their grades. There is no dropout rate. The dropout rate drops way down yeah. and they're not causing trouble out on the streets, which when they get arrested and they go into the uh, juvenile uh, in a, a prison and stuff like that, that's when it starts costing a lot of money for us mm. per person. It's $80,000 a year. So why do we need that? You know, we got to go and save that money, give it to the kids uh, and invest. The best investment you can make is always in, in kids. Beautiful. Nice. I love it. Yeah. How important is exercise and physical fitness 
in a business context like the upcoming summer is kind of talk about business and sales and that sort of thing. How important is the health and fitness physically to our success in our business world? Well, you know, the way I look at it is, is that in order to be complete and that's when you really have a 100% chance at being successful. When you have a complete situation, that means that you have developed your body, meaning your health, your strength, your energy, and all of that makes you much more positive, right? Because that's when you wake up, when you mm -hmm. feel strong, and you feel fit, and you ride the bicycle in the morning, ah, you know, the whole world looks much more bright. So the, 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 the training of the body, extremely important. The training of the mind, extremely important. This is why I say to people, I say, you got to educate yourself, you got to read something every day, you got to learn a new language, you got to just always improve and look at what can you do to improve your business or your life in general. So to, to develop the mind and then to develop the spiritual side and the soul, extremely important also. So if we put those three things together, we have total completion. And this is why the physical training, and, uh, and I'm not talking about wanting to win Mr. Olympia, no. We're talking about just take some light weights and do your reps, pump up the body, you know, and get some blood in there. Then go and run, go and run the stairs, go and exercise, go to a yoga class, um, uh, do some weight training. Or when you have kids, go out and play sports. You know, just to, you know, go football playing and go soccer playing and tennis playing and this and that. Whatever you can, that is what creates kind of life in you and therefore more enthusiasm and you have a much more positive outlook in life. Mm. And, and you mentioned just then about <clears throat> educating not only the physical but the mind. And you changed the world, by the way, of young uh, Logan Steinway in the front row at our last mm -hmm. event, where you told him he wanted to be the world's greatest surfer. And you said, that's good, do that, go all in, and but then train this as well. Yeah, exactly. I love that advice. Yeah. It changed his life. Yeah. You know, it that, changed that, his that, life. That's so. good, because that's, a, that's the important mm. thing. And look, the bottom line is, and why I like to do those seminars or those lectures uh, or those motivational speeches or whatever you may call it is because you can pump up people and you can really give them this extra push that they need give them encouragement uh, give them kind of get them into a positive thinking mode and all of those things because i know that i'm a product of exactly that mm -hmm. i remember that when i was 15 years old and picking up this magazine and reading about rage park I was so pumped up. I went home and all of the things that I hated at home and all of the things that I hated in school <laughs> all of a sudden disappeared because now I had a purpose. Uh -huh. Now I knew where I was going. I read it in the magazine. I said, this is what Reg Park did. Oh yeah, he came from a poor place, Leeds. It was a factory town. It was dirty and polluted and everything like this. And that's where he grew up. That's kind of the way I grew up here. And you know, I followed his footsteps and it worked. And so this is why it is so, if, when he just, just through a magazine has this kind of a power over me, yep. imagine now if we go there and tell people, life, you can do it. You can do it. You can be the greatest. Do it. Go for it. Get to the chopper. <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean, it's like you pump people up. And so this is why I like doing it because uh, I feel like I'm a product of a lot of encouragement from so many people, so I want to do the same. Because remember, in the end, we, I always say we're not judged by how much we make, but we're judged by how much we give back. Nice. How much do we give? So that's where I want to give something back. Uh, and I love that about you. When I could ask you one that, that where we wonder what we read is what happened. I read that you didn't actually know if you were going to go for governor until you said, whatever comes out of my mouth on the Jay Leno show, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Because so, you know that's a hundreds of millions of dollar decision because you're the highest right. paid movie star in the world right. at that time. So you know that there's hundreds of, and you, you left it up to chance? Really, not chance, but whatever comes out of your mouth on Jay Leno right. is what I'm going to do. That's, that's crazy. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> you have to understand that the debate has gone on now for a few weeks. Uh, because there was the recall election mm. where the California people wanted to get rid of the governor and they were unhappy of what was happening with the huge deficit and the blackouts and, the, and, and, and whatever way you looked, there was a problem. And uh, 
with illegal immigration and all of those kind of things. It was all uh, is kind of come together and people were fed up. So then it was the question, well, who is going to replace this governor? And a lot of people came to me, including my own party, and said, you know, why don't you run? You have a good shot. And uh, this was not really uh, kind of uh, part of my overall vision. Uh, but I said to myself, you know, I have had so much joy in uh, giving back and doing the after school programs and being the trainer of the Special Olympians and being the chairman of the President's Council on Fitness and pump up kids to, to exercise and train and to live healthy and to stay away from drugs and gangs and all this stuff. Uh, you know, why not go all out? You know, as I say <laughs> in my seminars always in German, we have a saying, Venschon, Denschon, ah. which means if you do something, go all out. Mm. Just do it the horse, <laughs> go for the whole shot. And that's exactly what I did. But there were complications because now you have to start thinking about your family. Mm. What does that mean to your kids? Yep. What does it mean for your wife? What does it mean to the whole family when you all of a sudden dedicate yourself fully and promise the Californian people mm. that I'm going to make you the priority? Well, now, does that mean that the family is not the priority? Mm. So how do you split the two and all of those things? So we had debates about that. And uh, after all the debates came in, I said to myself, I let my mind sort it out because I have all the information I need. I know the dangers, mm -hmm. the risks, the downsides, the upsides, uh, and the financial loss. You know, by, by, by made at that point twenty-five to thirty million dollars a movie. I made one or two movies a year, so that's like fifty million dollars right off the top that you lose, right? Yeah. So it's those kind of questions that all it all was part of that. And I said to myself, my mind, I know my mind well enough that it will make the right decision, and I don't even want to know now. Also, I didn't want to really talk about it because there is no such thing as keeping a secret, <laughs> yeah. as you know. Even your closest aide. Mm -hmm that is helping you to get there, mm. we'll leak it to the LA Times or wow. we'll leak it to someone else. That's just, as you can see now with the White House leaks mm. and with the CIA leaks and the FBI leaks and all this stuff in America, leaks. Mm. You cannot prevent it. Mm -hmm. Because as long as people owe someone something and they feel like, well, now I have some information, I can pay off my debt by calling the LA Times or calling the San mm -hmm. Francisco Chronicle or calling the New York Times. That's the way it works. So I did not want to even open up my mouth and have a decision uh, so that no one can go and run off and, uh, and, 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 uh, and leak it. So I just said to myself, I'm going to go and uh, think about it. And then I'm going to just see what happens at the Leno show. And I also was looking for how the audience responds. Mm. So there was another ah. aspect of it. So when Jay Leno said, so I heard <laughs> that you may run. Uh, so what is now the situation? And people were screaming. <laughs> Screaming, so there was this real life yeah. in the audience, kind of enthusiasm. Thank God this guy could help us and get our state out of trouble. Mm. So that was the attitude that I felt. So this is why I said then, I said, look, we've run the state into the ground and it's time now to pick it up again. And I can do it. Wow. You know? and, and, and people bought in and they, they elected me. Mm. Two months later after that announcement, they elected me. And I, I love, it was my honor, I've read Total Recall three or four times. I listened to the audio book that you read yourself. Man. Well, the first to the last chapter. <laughs> but it was my honor to see that journey and see your written goal book that you wanted to achieve. Man. Many of them were, like I'm wearing a shirt that says, yeah. do the unthinkable. That's right, a lot yeah. of the things you achieved, yeah. no one thought possible. No, no, you did not. it. <laughs> yeah. But you know, as you know, and I think we've talked about it, you and I, because you believe uh, exactly the same as I do, that the bigger your goals are and the more outrageous they are, or especially if someone else has never done it, yeah. then the people will always say, this is crazy, this will never happen. You cannot do that. It's impossible in all those <laughs> things. And so, you know, we, we have heard all the naysayers and everything like that. And uh, you just cannot pay any attention to that because yeah. it's just the way it is. And so I'm, I always feel like if I can see it, and if I can believe it, then I can achieve it. Beautiful. And uh, man, do the unthinkable, do the impossible. I love That's your right. quote. It's impossible until you do. I love how you say, well, if it's impossible, that's great. So when I do it, not if, yeah. but when I do it, yeah. I'll be the first one to do it. That's right. But that's a famous Nelson Mandela ah, quote, you wow. see? And this is why I always, uh, you know, uh, credit him for the quote, ah. because Nelson Mandela said, you know, everything seems to be always impossible until someone does it. <laughs> and I said to myself, that makes so much sense. 
Yeah. You know, and you had to think about that for a second because he made it yeah. sound so simple. Yeah. But it is true. Yeah. You know, when when uh, someone says that we're going to go and land on Mars, mm. the people are going to say, that's not going to happen for a long time. <laughs> that is not going to happen or whatever it is. And it's only because no one has done it. Mm. Yeah, but as soon as someone does it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, and as soon as uh, people hang out there, then all of a sudden they say, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You know, so, so, so that that's just the way it is. And, uh, and I think that people should not be discouraged when they hear from people who say, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Forget about it. Look, I'm an expert in this subject. It's not going to happen. Because remember, I, in my seminars, I talk about that. The number one experts in movie making, agents, managers, and studio executives, looked me in the eye when I was finished with bodybuilding competition, and I said to them, I would like to become a leading man in movies. Can you help me and tell me kind of things that I need to do to get there? And they just said, Arnold, you're a great bodybuilding champion. Why bother with this? It's not going to happen. Mm. No one has ever become a star, a leading man with an accent. No one. And especially not with your body and blah, blah, blah. And they found every excuse that you could think of. And, uh, and this was the number one experts. Mm. And to them, that were valid so, reasons. So, so they were very valid reasons. But because they were making their decision based on what did history teach mm. them. Now, history taught them that no one has ever made it because, like they said, look, people in America want to hear people talk like John Wayne. Mm. That is their hero. Yeah. Or Clint Eastwood, <laughs> make my day. Yep. You know, they, they, that's, oh, great. But, you know, I can put you in a, in some movie where you play a Nazi or something like that. Mm. Yeah, we can do that. I can get your job like that if that's what you want. So this is the kind of attitude that I saw. So, I, but I, I, I said to myself, you know, I understand it because I've heard the same thing in bodybuilding. I heard the same thing when I said I want to go to America. So, yeah, of course I would hear that. But I didn't pay any attention and I just moved on and that proved them uh, wrong. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, you've been an inspiration to us, just like Reg, Steve Reeves, Reg Park, Steve Reeves were to you. So well, it has thank been, you. on behalf of my generation and frankly yeah. every generation right now, right. it is my honor and thanks that I put to you as our inspiration. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward being in Australia, in Melbourne for the Arnold Classic Sports mm -hmm. and Fitness Festival. Nice. Oh, it's going to be huge. Australia is such a fantastic place for bodybuilding and for fitness. I mean, I have been going over to Australia since the early 70s mm. to visit Paul Graham, yeah. who was like the king of bodybuilding and bodybuilding promotion and all this. And yeah, you, you introduced still, me to Paul at, yeah, um, at the Terminator Genesis premiere. Right, yeah. What a wonderful man. I know. So, so I mean, he and, uh, and his wife, uh, Carol, I mean, they're just wonderful people. Mm. And um, uh, so now to go over there again and to have this festival and to meet all my fans over there, it's going to be really terrific. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so for the Sydney uh, appearance for the Total Success Summit with the business application, I'm really looking forward to that. So looking at the cam right there, what would you say to someone who had been to the website and decided not to come? So that answer, address that one to the lens there and you're no stranger to that. What would you say to the person who went to the website and said, ah, that's not for me? What would you say to that person? Well, I, I'm not going to hype you. And I'm not going to tell you, you made a mistake or anything like that. I said, this is the choice you made. I just can tell you that people walk out of our seminar and they're all pumped up and they get inspired. They want to do more in life. They want to be more successful and they want to reach 100% of their potential. And I think that's what it is. That's what our seminar is all about. Our lectures are all about. Our motivational speech is all about. I think that uh, Dan is doing a fantastic job in organizing and getting the message out there. So I just hope that you give us a chance and that you come.